Thanks. And I now call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to thank Cameron Buchanan for raising this motion and securing debating time on what I think we all agree is a very important issue. Scotland is a country that is well renowned for its beauty, not only our vast rural landscapes, but our towns and parts of our cities. However, such places are all too often tainted by an abundance of litter on the streets and waterways of our towns and countryside. As someone who has never so much as dropped a sweetie paper in my life, I find it shocking, incomprehensible and quite frankly distressing that in 2016 this is still a problem. Some 250 million pieces of litter are picked up every single year, a figure so high it is hard to fully contemplate the number of people who might, must actually have discarded it. Reducing litter must be tackled. Sadly, not everyone is aware of the impact that rubbish has, not only on the environment and Scotland's wildlife, but also on people's health and well-being. And while short-term way, uh, um, short ways of dealing with litter may work for a while, the only lasting way to stop this problem is by going straight to the source. Public attitudes to littering must change. There is no way around the fact that the responsibility for littering must always come back to the culprits. The very definition of littering itself must be challenged, for while most people appear to be absolutely against ever deliberately littering, they view accidental littering, perhaps only being a, a small amount or there only being a, a little bit here and there, or perhaps because of a lack of bins, whatever, as a different matter. But it's attitudes such as these that must be challenged. People are generally embarrassed about admitting to littering, and so challenging any littering could be helpful. However, as, as Cameron Buchanan pointed out, this could be met with aggression, so people must always be cautious. But of course, there have been moves in the right direction. Introducing a charging scheme for single-use carrier bags in 2014 was a huge step forward towards cleaner and healthier streets in Scotland. Figures from the first year following the introduction of the charge show that the number of plastic bags given out in shops fell by a massive 80 per cent, equivalent to 650 million bags. Not only this, but the scheme saved over 4,000 tonnes of material when taking account of factors such as increased use of bags for life and, as we all know, uh, significant amounts of money were generated for charity too. Scheme like, schemes like this help to change the public's attitude to the environment and what they are doing with our resources. This allows at least some pressure to be taken from local authorities who lie heavily under the burden of cleaning up litter. 15,000 tonnes of litter are cleared by local authorities every single year, and this work is costly. Included is around 4,000 tonnes of tobacco-related litter, such as packaging and cigarette butts, so another reason to give up smoking. It is therefore extremely important then to applaud the work of charities and volunteer groups who dedicate their efforts to helping keep the streets of Scotland clean. The work these communities do is invaluable, and they not only set an example to others on how to keep their streets clean, they can encourage others to follow in their footsteps. In my own constituency, I have carried out a Cumbria Beach clean once a year for nine consecutive years, involving the local community. Wearing high-vis vests with volunteer and Keep Scotland Beautiful helps make people think. Colburnie Community Council carries out six such days a year, and others take place across my constituency from Beeth to Fairley to Arran. And the Arran Litter Volunteer Network is at the, uh, sorry, the Ayrshire Litter Volunteer Network is at the forefront of such action, organising groups wherever possible. Such groups like these must be applauded as the work they do not only keeps Scotland streets clean and safer, but helps alleviate pressure on local authorities and allows them to use their time and resources on other matters. I have long been an advocate of the Adopt a Road scheme, which worked so successfully in North America, where groups, individuals or businesses take responsibility for keeping a given stretch of road uh, free of litter, working closely with local authorities. Schools do work hard to inculcate responsibility for not littering. Indeed, adults are more likely to be responsible, and so it is their attitudes that must be focused upon. Scotland is rightly considered beautiful, presiding officer, by many visitors, but they also find it dirty by the standards of other European countries. Uh, in 1985, I had a German girlfriend who invited her parents to stay in Scotland for a fortnight with her. They left after three days because the country was just too dirty in their view. I found it profoundly embarrassing. Uh, we must work together to reduce litter and thereby change perceptions of Scotland for the better. Thank you. Many thanks. Malcolm Chisholm. Uh,